You're listening to Luxury Insider, a podcast that highlights the hottest trends and innovations in the world of luxury, hosted by Invent Lux. Hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss an episode. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm your host, Tim, Tip Top Tim Fitch, and welcome to the first episode of our new Invent Lux podcast. Today we'll be uh, diving into the following topics. First one, how Invent got into uh, the Lux, or in particular the fashion industry. What value uh, we've uh, been able to provide to the industry. And also some examples uh, of work we've done over the past year or so, which sort of illustrate the opportunity for everyone in that sector. Joining me today, uh, for today's podcast is Maggie Zoo. Hi uh, everyone. Hi, hi Maggie, uh, who's a senior business analyst with us. Welcome to the podcast, Maggie. Can you give our listeners a little introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello, team. Uh, my name is Maggie. Uh, I joined the event around three years ago, and since then I've been working on um, R&D tax credit scheme. And uh, about one year ago, something magically happened. I mean, it's not magic, magic. It's just like any other uh, business opportunities. It always starts with um, a mutual connection. And uh, Tim got me this opportunity to work with fashion clients. And uh, here we are. That's great. We'll tell you more about it uh, in the uh, middle of the podcast. So Maggie, it's great to have you on today. So we'll get started. So I suppose really the first question is you've sort of intimated is that uh, for those that don't know, uh, Invent started life as a management consultancy Mm -hmm. in the construction sector. And of course that's still a very important part about what we do. However, we find ourselves now uh, with a number of uh, clients in the fashion sector, Mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting pivot. So... I suppose, I'll, I suppose I'll, ju- I'll just fill in a little bit of detail about uh, how we got our first client. So we've got many, many clients in the construction sector, all different types of businesses, lots of architects and property developers and engineers and contractors, as you might imagine. And one particular property uh, developer asked me one day whether we could help his wife's business, which was a, a very well-known fashion brand, could they possibly claim R&D tax credits, which of course is a, is a very important thing that we do. And that was the challenge, wasn't it, Maggie? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Would our processes work? Would, does the fashion sector do research and development, as it's defined in the tax code, not what everyone thinks up in their head sometimes, and could we successfully make a claim? Mm-hmm. So what happened? Yeah, I still remember I was very um, surprised and also excited when I hear about this opportunity at the first place because apparently it's brand new to all of us. Uh, but personally, I, I like fashion very much. I like the fabrics and the texture and the color. And I like the expression that we all think uh, clothes are our choosing scheme. So you communicate through your clothes. And um, yeah, it was very difficult at the beginning. But thankfully, we have developed this um, very mo- uh, mature and useful model to carry out uh, technical analysis and uh, financial analysis. Um, well, that, let's just delve into that a little bit deeper because... Yeah. I'm guessing if you're in the fashion sector or the luxe sector, you'd say, well, what, what is, what, what was similar between f- construction and fashion? Because of course it's, it wasn't obvious to us initially, yeah. but having been, uh, we, we trialled our processes in that sector, haven't we? And one thing that struck us is that that product development cycle Mm -hmm. for developing a garment from the uh, creative uh, the the creative concept through to a a garment that works those processes are we found very similar to the 
architectural uh, design processes. Yes. And a bit of a light bulb went off then, didn't it? Because the other thing that's really, really interesting is, I mean, that process, they're very similar at a high level, obviously. The other thing that struck us was that, so therefore, uh, to take a, a, a single garment or, or a, a single uh, accessory from concept through to working garment or accessory, yeah was like architecture, it's also like a project, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, um, and then of course, you don't normally just do one garment at a time, do you? There, there's a collection, yes. of usually seasonal, but there are other types, which have many garments in them. Yeah, uh, so like our clients, uh, most of them, they have two to four uh, collections per year. And uh, that's totally different with fast fashion, as we know, because they have like 52 collections per year. I'm not even joking. That's how they made it. But for our clients, they really took effort to spend time to work on each collections because, you know, it's few uh, around the whole year. And uh, it's very often they start to search um, the most suitable, sustainable materials and then they spend one to two months to treat the fabrics to make it right and then it comes to the long process of sampling um, experimentations and, and and size trials so it does take a, a very long time and uh, i do feel like those effort and time they need to be appreciated and and that's the whole r d tax credit scheme about to encourage innovation uh, and as you mentioned before tim about the similarities between construction and uh, fashion I was very surprised because it didn't take long to find the similarities. Uh, for example, constructions uh, companies, um, when you, when you I mean, for both construction or fashion designers, when you, uh, uh, when you try to do something special about the structure and the shape, you have to make sure it won't collapse, whether it's a building or it's a garment. Uh, and secondly, um, for architects or engineers, they um, they do for the prototyping process, right? They they um, they often start to doing something with a small scale, and once that succeed, they move that to a, a larger scale. That's totally the same with the garment uh, making process. So I think it's it's very interesting, um, and also it's not only about garment making, because um, we also look at um, aspects like. Um, sustainability, uh, manufacturers, or IT development. That's many areas to look at R&D. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's what really caught our eye, wasn't it? The fact that the, the, the industry is looking at similar problems that the construction industry has yeah. been facing around sustainability is a very good example. The fact that it, the a collection is a group of uh, Individual garments, projects or yes. garments, yeah, garments in the fashion industry, projects in construction, but programs of work is what the construction industry is about. Mm -hmm. Fashion's the same; you just call it a collection rather than a yeah. program. And of course, during the year, you may have four, two, four, six, or many mm -hmm. programs or collections that you're dealing with, which have this development process within them, and that's what was so enlightening for us when we saw that and we put two and two together light bulb flashing off all the other sort of cliches mm -hmm. yes our stuff's going to work and there's a lot of money to be found for yes. our fashion clients because um, we know that, that that kind of effort that development work is rewarded by the government through their R&D tax credit scheme so yes. Whether you're large or small, there's uh, a reward to be had, which you're entitled to. Mm -hmm. It's government policy. It just happens to be administered by HMRC. And that that was what was so exciting for everyone, wasn't it? Yes. And I, I know that um, on the first report, we both worked quite late into the night. Because obviously for us, what we found with R&D tax credits, the whole time it's been about translating tax speak into the language that the particular industry understands. And of course, we, we, we've done that for construction 
And then we, it was like learning a new language, wasn't it? Yes. We had to totally. understand the, yeah, the, the vernacular, not the, not the, the, the language of the fashion sector, which we've sort of done <laughs> so far. And then the other thing is, although our processes were work, we needed uh, someone who knew the technology, which uh, I'm glad to say we've, we've found, back, someone. We found someone brilliant yeah. at that who will be on a later podcast. So we'll introduce the Boaz later. Yep. Um, but the, you know, I think that that's the message that there's, uh, there's a lot of money which has been expended by the industry developing uh, new garments and accessories, dealing with sustainability. I know we've got an example of uh, one of our clients who pivoted into PPE for the COVID yep. and had to develop all sorts of things there, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Yep. Um, and IT, and I know some of our clients are looking at all sorts of very, very interesting, exciting stuff to do with retail. Some, not, not all of that cost, but some of it counts as research and development as it's defined in the tax code, which isn't always the same way that we all think about R&D. It's not all about people in white coats. Mm-hmm. Well, that can be, but uh, it, it usually isn't. Okay, that's great. So let's just dig in a little bit so that our viewers and listeners get an idea of the sorts of things that we we found. With that, we don't want to sort of give away any trade secrets uh, from our that. clients, but just in just let's just talk about uh, a generic uh, garment development process. What what are we looking for? What what have we made successful claims? Yeah, yeah, I can give a few um, examples about what we've claimed before uh, in a very vague language, <laughs> pardon, oh, bear with me. Um, so, yeah, as Tim mentioned, we have this client, they uh, respond very quickly um, regarding the COVID pandemic. So they developed the first um, reusable uh, and washable PPE guns, and that can be washed over 70 times. Um, that was a very successful claim. And uh, we also have this um, quite normal uh, garment making claims uh, when our clients, they try to do some very innovative shape uh, on a dress. You know, when, when the fabric is very stiff, it's, it's easy to manipulate the garments to make, to make the shape. But when the, when the fabric is very soft, they actually have technical uh, uncertainties to manipulate to manipulate the the structure but they they had to develop new ways uh, to to fix the garment and make it fit yeah so that's another claim and that type of activity looks like people literally with a sewing machine and draping multiple times yes we call them experiments others might say trial and error we prefer the word experiment yes many times to get it to look right, wear right, yep. be robust enough to last more than one wearing and all of that sort of stuff, isn't it? Yes. What about, uh, we've, we've had uh, claims for special fabrics that have been developed, haven't we? I remember there's some yeah, very clever yeah, ones. Yeah, we do have that one. Uh, so for that one, our client, they want to achieve this sort of shiny look and that cannot be achieved through normal fabric. So they have to play the different combination of yarns and uh, to mix metallic yarns with normal yarns to make it um, stiff and also shiny. And that's how they created the first type of metallic fabric. That one was very, very interesting. That was, I, even I was, I was amazed yeah. that this sort of stuff happened. And I thought the other one that was of interest, was, we see there's a, there's a sort of, a, not so much a trend, but there's, People have been experimenting a lot with printing on fabrics of mm-hmm. different types and all sorts of experimentation going on. Yeah, that one was a really complicated one. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure I can make the sequence right. Because uh, I remember it's about the layers, like uh, you need to press it first and printing, or you have to print it first and and, uh, and spray and press. It just... It's, it takes many steps and uh, our clients, they have to take several trials to find out the best sequence so they can get the, the best outcome. 
Yeah, that one takes um, a lot of ex experimentations, I remember. And just on those sorts of things, I mean, obviously, our the output of our work mm -hmm. is that our client gets a report, which yes. it comes in two parts, really. It explains what the research and development activity has been, and then there's a bit that quantifies yes. uh, what that money is spent, because these claims are always historic, aren't they? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how many years back can you go? Uh, we can only go back to two years. Yeah, That's from a particular financial year end, yes. isn't it? So yes. And the reason for that is that that's just the latest time that you can um, adjust your corporate tax return, isn't it? Two yes, years exactly. after it was yes. uh, originally due. Okay, and just give some outlines of the types of cost that, or the cost headings that can be included in those claims. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can look at your labor cost, um, labor, yeah. yeah, your direct labor or indirect stuffs, and also uh, the material cost or sampling cost for, for fashion terms. And uh, if you hire freelancers, if you have EPW to provide um, internal workers for you, uh, that cost we can look at as well. Um, and if you have um, spent some some time or cost to develop any new softwares um, that we can look as well. Um, and yeah. sometimes you can include subcontract costs. Yes, that's the freelancers. For freelancers, yeah. yes. Okay. So quite a broad range of costs, and usually, it, and it's a big part of a uh, fashion brand's yes. costs, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, on that note. Let's wrap up this conversation. It was very insightful. And thank you for joining me today, Maggie. I know we've been on, both been on a bit of a journey with this, <laughs> which has been, um, it's been great. I mean, I, I'm going to go slightly off script here. I mean, Maggie has uh, done brilliantly over the last past year or so. And uh, there's been a few ups and downs because it was a bit stressful at the start. We've come through it, you're uh, stronger develop massively really brilliant so wonderful and to all of our listeners today thank you for tuning in i hope you've enjoyed this episode it's the first one and if you did then please subscribe turn your notifications on so you don't miss the next episode which is probably in a couple of weeks i hope to see you at our up and coming webinar on september the 9th information to register is in the description below and if you bump into us during London Fashion Week, don't forget to say hello. Thank you for watching Luxury Insider. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and give us a five-star review. Like, comment, and share it with someone who'd find value in it too. Head on over to our website at www.inventlux.com to learn more. And we'll see you on the next episode.